Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to try to find the moment of inertia of this particular disc right here where a hole is cut out. So we have a solid disc of uniform density with radius r and the total disc, well we're not going to get into the mass yet, we'll explain that in just a moment, but from the disc we cut a hole. Now notice the radius of the hole is half the radius of the disc, which means that the surface area of the hole is one quarter the surface area of the disc, which means that the remaining crescent after the hole is cut out is three quarters the area of the original disc. Now let's come over here and try to make some sense out of how we express the mass of the disc. If we take the total mass of the disc before the hole was cut out and we set the mass equal to m, then the mass of the hole that was cut out will be a fourth of that, m over 4. The reason for that is that the area of the hole is one quarter the area of the disc, and that's because the radius of the hole is half the radius of the disc, and notice that the area is pi r squared, so if you double the radius, you quadruple the area. That means the area of the total disc is four times the area of the hole. So what happens now if you let the mass equal the crescent so if the remaining portion of the disc after the hole was cut out, if this here, the mass is equal to m. And that's what we're going to do for this problem. We're going to let m be the mass of the crescent. So this is equal to the mass of the crescent. If we do that, then the mass of the hole is one-third the mass of the crescent. Because we could say that because the mass of the crescent is three-quarters the mass of the whole disc, you take a quarter of three quarters, that gives you a third. Hmm, a quarter of three quarters gives us a third. But in other words, if we take the total mass of the disc minus the, mass of the, minus the mass of the hole, we get the mass of the crescent, and that will be three times the mass of the hole. All right, so now that we have that straight, I hope, now we can go ahead and try to solve the problem. So what we're going to do here is try to figure the moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia is equal to the moment inertia of the disk, the total solid disk, minus the moment of inertia of the hole. And that's how we deal with holes. When we have a hole cut out, we subtract the moment of inertia. If we add something, then we add the moment of inertia of that. Now notice, the moment of inertia of the disk is simply going to be the moment of inertia of a solid disk. That's one half the mass times the radius squared. Of course, we have to be careful about the mass. The moment of inertia of the hole, well, now we're going to use the parallel axis theorem for that because we can figure out the moment of inertia of the hole as a, as a missing disk, so to speak, but now we've moved it from here to its new location. All right, so let's go ahead and try that. So I is equal to the moment of inertia of the whole disk. Since the mass of the crescent is m, that means the mass of the disk will be 4 thirds m. So it'll be 4 thirds, well, it'll be 1 half, because it's a solid disk, times 4 thirds the mass, because it's 1 half times the mass, times the radius squared. That will be r squared. This is the moment, the moment of inertia of the solid disk. Now we're going to subtract from that the moment of inertia of the whole, which is going to be the moment of inertia of the center mass of the hole plus the mass of the hole times d squared. Of course, I use big M, small m, doesn't matter. And the whole thing needs to be subtracted from the moment of inertia, the disk. So now we need to figure out what those are. So I can simplify this. I have the moment of inertia is equal to the 4 and the 2 cancel out, so that gives me a 2 thirds. 1 half of 4 thirds is 2 thirds m r squared. Remember that the mass that I have here is the mass of the crescent. I subtract from that the moment of inertia of the hole. Now that's a flat disk, so it would be 1 half the mass, the mass of the hole, that would be 1 third the mass of the crescent, so it would be m over 3 times the radius squared, and the radius is r over 2 quantity squared. The radius is half the radius of the whole disk. Then I add to that the mass of the whole, which is m over 3, 
multiplied times the distance squared and it's moved this distance which is r over 2 and I have to square that there you go now I can go ahead and simplify what's inside the brackets so moment of inertia is equal to 2 thirds m r squared minus here I have a 1 over 4 1 over 8 1 over 3, so I'm going to multiply that together. I get 1 over 24 mr squared. 1 over 24 mr squared plus 1 over 4 times 3, which is 1 over 12. That would be 1 over 12 mr squared. So now I have what's inside the brackets. I can go ahead and add those together. This is 2 over 24 plus 1 over 24 or 3 over 24. So let's go ahead and continue over here. Let's have the moment of inertia equals 2 thirds mr squared minus 124 plus 224 is 3 over 24 mr squared. Well, notice I can simplify that to 1 over 8. So moment of inertia is equal to 2 thirds mr squared minus 1 over 8 mr squared. Well, that didn't help me because the common denominator in this case will be 24. So 3 times 8 is 24, so I is equal to 16 over 24 mr squared minus 3 over 24 mr squared. And finally, when I combine those three, those two, I get 13 over 24 mr squared, which is the moment of inertia of the crescent, which means the disk with the hole cut out, and knowing that the mass m is equal to the mass of the crescent, not the mass of the whole disk with, before the hole was cut out. M is only the mass of the crescent. And so the moment of inertia of that will therefore be 13 over 24 mr squared. And that is how that's done.